All right, great. I think this will probably be the last time I'll teach here at the studio. Um, Monday's class will probably be at my office. Not that that makes any difference for where you're supposed to go. <laughs> um, I'll be here. I, I mean, we'll be together. I just won't be in this physical space. I'm just gonna pull out this. All right. So, mm, we can really celebrate, we get to celebrate, um, you know, so many, there have been a lot of good things that have happened. Of course, that is my, my thinking. And we are um, able to really recognize too the celebration of freedom, how much freedom we have and looking at that freedom. And then also um, solstice is tomorrow. So we have our, you know, we're, we're, we have our longest day um, in regards to light. And I do hope that you will go out, get out, go be out and feel the, the sun and the light and the grass and the plants and the trees and feel the support of nature around you. So that made me, I couldn't not read this morning when I looked at the different things I wanted to share I'm still, I'm going back to Mary Oliver because um, to me, there's a sense of freedom in that, in her summer day and, uh, and, and a way to nurture as we navigate through transitions and, you know, um, challenging times. Let's not forget um, some of the simpler pieces that are important. So go ahead and take a comfortable seat. Relaxing your shoulders, finding the ground beneath you, lengthening your spine towards the sky. Deepening your inhale. and lengthening your exhale. And you might be bringing in your ujjayi breathing by placing your tongue, the tip of the tongue behind the front two teeth and creating a hollowness at the back of the throat. And whether you're practicing ujjayi or just a balanced inhale and exhale, can you once again make the breath smooth? working with that smooth quality all the way around the breath. The inhale, the pauses, the exhale. And while you're practicing and listening and feeling, when the mind comes in and begins to churn about something, it could be even brief, Go back to, you know, the breath and where you feel it moving in your body. This gift of being able to be attentive to your breath. Mm. 
we often go, as one of my teachers says, we often go looking for peace and forgetting that it's always there. We always have it. It's more, you know, clearing the way to reconnect with it. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around her enormous, with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. Release any control on your breath. But once again, notice, how is your body being breathed? And honoring your presence, please bring your hands in front of your heart. I'm gonna open the practice, I'm gonna chant the sound of Om. You're welcome to join me with that vibration of sound, the vibration of sound and the singing that is really connected through the, the movement through the throat and your heart. And, and can you feel it begin deep down low in the pelvic floor and actually rise up? We'll chant the sound of Om. We'll sing Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. Take a deep inhale.
exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. Release your hands and lift your gaze. And we're gonna start, we're gonna come to standing. So coming up to standing, you can move your blankets out of the way. And then as you come up to standing, just take a little wider stance and soften your knees a little bit and just beginning to turn. Letting the arms at this moment, they swing and they tap the body. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. So we're gonna do that, that powerful, short, fast exhale out the mouth at the same moment that you are also uh, pushing with the hands. So whenever you're ready, you can join me. Five, four, three, two, one. We slowly come back to center. And just taking a moment just to notice. And then we'll step the feet back toward each other when you're ready. And we're gonna take um, three short inhales. Um, through the nose and the exhale is going to be out the mouth so it's going to be that short quick <sighs> exhale out the mouth you'll bend both knees and open the palms back behind you okay so when you're ready here we go <sighs> One, when you go down, stay down. Inhale deeply. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Arms up overhead. And exhale, bring the hands back in front of the heart. Release both arms. Great. Shine the palms forward, mountain pose. So just taking a moment to notice like the weight in your um, feet. An awareness of the back of your body. The front of the body, including the front of the spine. And now let's take right arm, lift it up overhead. Lift your right arm up. Reach from the right low belly all the way down into the ground. Another deep inhale. And as you exhale, start to side bend. Your next inhale, let's come up. Exhale, we'll have both arms dangling. Inhale, lifting your other arm up, reaching to the ground all the way from the, the deep belly on your left. You reach into the earth. And also so as it's also reaching up. So there's two directions, deep breath in and your exhale side. Bend. Your inhale, go back to vertical. And your exhale, release your arms. Your next inhale, lift both of your arms up. And your exhale, bring the hands back in front of your heart. And then we'll release both arms. 
All right. Let's take a Padavastasana with your chair. So you can either have the, the chair. So I'm going to be putting my foot up on the back of the chair. I've set it up just slightly different than I have been. I have been having it um, just standing in the middle of the room. Today I thought, well, I'm going to use this wall. I'm actually going to put, <clears throat> you could put a blanket at the back of your chair. Maybe the back of whatever chair you're using is too tall and you want to just put some blocks on the seat of your chair. You can stack some blocks up there. Or maybe the back of the chair isn't quite tall enough and you could put something up between the wall, you know, a block and that. So those are the, just some ideas in regards to this uh, <clears throat> piece of furniture that you're gonna be using. The first one we're gonna do is gonna be, if you stand and you're gonna face, you're gonna um, face at a 45 degree angle. And let's have your, um, your left leg be your standing leg. And you're gonna take the right foot up onto the chair, either the back of the chair, the seat of the chair, the blocks on the chair. So I'm gonna stand kind of at a 45 with my foot, my right leg up on the, on the back. So let's go to the standing leg. On the standing leg, so that standing foot, is, it's not turned 90 degrees from the chair. It's turned at a 45 from the chair. And let's go to the inner thigh of the standing leg. So on the inner thigh of the standing leg, tone the inner thigh towards that inseam of the leg. When you do that, do you feel that this, um, the outer hip, the greater trochanter, pulls into the body so that you're not just letting the outer hip go out in space. You're toning the inner thigh to the inseam of that leg. You're drawing the greater trochanter in as well. So the standing leg is really um, stable, strong. And then on the, on the lifted leg, on the lifted leg, I'm also finding that sense of what's happening at that crease from, from on the lifted leg, from the pubic bone all the way to the greater trochanter. Can that crease be broad all the way to the outside? We've talked about how is that, is that lifted leg? To, if I have my leg too high for my hamstrings, I'll, I'll feel that rolling up and in on the lifted leg. I want this to be broad from, from that hip point to the greater trochanter on the lifted leg. All right, and then let's take your left arm and reach it up. Same thing as before, you're reaching from the deep low belly on the left into the standing leg. Right hand can be out on your shin or knee. Inhaling, and you might stay vertical or you might take a slight side bend. Notice on the standing leg, if you lost that tone at the inner thigh, then let's inhale, come up. And we'll take the leg off the back of the chair. Turn around, because you're going to do the other side. Any questions about what the position of the legs? I know you're not seeing me as well, because I don't have a wall right here. All right, so the right leg is going to be the standing leg. And you're going to shift the weight to the right, put your left foot up, your left leg up. So the, the right foot is at kind of a 45. Left leg is going straight out. Again, we're going to tone the standing leg in the inner thigh towards the inseam. The greater trochanter coming in. That seam at the left lifted leg, is it from that space of the top of your hip point on the left to the greater trochanter? All of that space, can you soften that? Any 
and and uh, Jackie on a standing leg at the top of the fibula, at the outer knee, the top of the fibula, can you reach all the way into the, the right heel? And on the standing leg, can you go from that outer knee up to the, the greater trochanter? So from the outer knee, you're going in two directions. And let's lift the right arm up. Inhale deeply, exhale, either staying vertical or taking a slight side bend. Deep breathing. And then we're going to inhale, come back up. Exhale, step down. Great. All right, that's good. Can we also do uh, one where we face, uh, let's see, we're gonna do, we did, we're gonna face the chair. So if you'll turn and face your, your chair, this, so your feet are facing straight into the chair. We'll go back to standing on the left leg and place the right leg up. Same on the standing leg. Inhale, reach both arms up. Deep breathing in. Now, with your next exhale, you're gonna to start to turn towards your right. So, everything's stable with the legs. The arms come down, the left arm at the outer right knee, maybe and the right arm dangling back. Back to center. Stepping down. And then taking the second side, standing on the right leg. I'm just gonna come over and see you. Taking the left leg up in case I'm able to help you. So, so with the left leg, well, first we'll go to the standing leg. So the right leg is the standing leg. So on the inseam of the right leg, tone it to the midline. Tone into the inseam of the right leg. Draw the greater trochanter in as well. And then on the lifted leg, on that groin seam, going all the way from the pubic bone, all the way to the greater trochanter, it's the, your left lifted leg. Is that broad right there? All the way across, all the way out. Can you soften that anymore from the ASIS, from that top hip point, all the way to that greater choke? Uh, is your spine vertical? Are you able to stand tall or is the leg too high so that you're unable, you know, you feel yourself being pulled forward? If so, you know, don't take the leg up so high. And then with your next inhale, lift both your arms. I think this is good, Al. Go for a little lower lift. Go for something lower than you had it a moment ago. You had your left leg up. Take it something a little bit lower with your lifted leg. Yeah. Yeah, let me see you again, Al. Put that left leg back up there. Let me check you out. On something not as high, not quite as high, that I think is a little too high. Jackie, that looks good. Let me see that again. You look great. Very nice. And the twist. Can you release the arms wide and begin to turn? Yeah. Yeah, I know. The twist really challenges our balance. Good. That looks good, Evelyn, on that outer hip. Yeah. Great. Thank you. That's it, Al. That's a better height. That is definitely a better height. Does that feel better? Like you are able to. And then one more time. Yeah, let's go ahead and come back to center. Let's just hold, lift both arms one more time. Sorry. We just want to keep Al, a little company for Al here. Good. And just a little tone on the inner thigh, the standing leg. 
Make sure you're reaching all the way down. And, and then we'll release and step down. Thank you, everyone. That's really great. Okay. And then um, I'm going to remove my stuff from the back of my chair. But can you take your chair or your desktop or whatever it is, and, and can you take a, a downward dog with that? So make sure the feet are behind the hips, not under the hips. So we're not in a half forward fold. We're actually in a downward dog where we're able to really reach back into the legs. Still pressing down through the index finger knuckle. But at the inner thigh, that let the inner groin soften back into your body. So you're able to find that length through the spine. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great. And, and what about your breathing? What is the, the quality of your breathing? All right, and then we'll walk towards the chair and shift the hands to the hips and draw the shoulder blades back and come to standing. Great, thank you. All right, so um, I'm going to sit my chair out of the way. And let's take uh, your strap for a moment or scarf or belt or whatever you got. Let's take the strap and when you're ready, just inhale, take it halfway. I don't even know if you can see my head. <laughs> inhale, lift the strap all the way up. Great. And then let's go a little wider on the strap. Okay. Deep breathing, please. And then with your next exhale, bend your elbows with a lot of awareness about what's happening through that space of the heart. And then lifting at the top of the breastbone. The base of the skull is still lifted. Start to take the, the wrists back. You're still lifting at the top of the breastbone, broadening all the way towards the collarbones to the upper arm bones. All the way, like if I could and I can, how do I reach from my heart to my hands? From my heart to my hands right now. And this is good. And one more deep breath in, a complete exhale while you're here. And then your next inhale, go ahead and lift the arms up. Exhale, release both arms down. You can just um, sit the strap aside. Bring your blocks to being uh, available for you. We're going to take a wide stance on your mat. So you might want blocks there, hands up on the hips. Remembering again, that lift you just had through the front of the chest, feet are parallel. Inhale deeply and as you exhale, bow forward. Bowing forward, hands are gonna come either to your blocks or the ground, but let's take downward dog arms. Downward dog arms, either on blocks or on the floor. Strongly reaching from the inner knees to the heels. Inner knees to the heels. And, and Jackie, on the, on the outer knee, notice if the top of the fibula, at the top of that, at that fibula, can you roll that in a little bit? Sometimes the fibula is rolling out. I'd like you to roll it in. 
Roll the fibula in a little on the outer knee. And then keep reaching though from the inner knee toward the inner heel. Sometimes the outer knees are really tight and the inner knees are, have more slack. This is um, common for a lot of us anyway. So we're gonna tone at the inner knee and broaden at the outer knee. And then we're gonna walk the hands back, shift them to the hips and come to standing. All right, let's step the feet together. Deep breath in. Inhale, lift both arms. And exhale, hands to the heart. Step the feet wide again. We're gonna take side angle pose. We'll take a block probably, or a chair or whatever. Let's go to your right. Your right, so you'll have a block at your right outer shin. Back foot's turned in slightly, front foot's turned all the way forward. Give yourself plenty of room. Inhale, take the arms out. And exhale, Parshvakonasana, side angle. Opening through that side body that's up towards the sky. That doesn't mean you, you think of shortening the underside, but broadening this, the skyward side. And then we're gonna inhale, come up. Spin the feet the other way. Inhale, the arms wide. Exhale, partial kanasana, side angle. Deep breathing. Broadening at those back ribs that are up towards the sky right now. Can the breath come in there? And then your next inhale, come back up. Good. Release the arms, hands on the hips. Inhale, lift at the top of the breastbone. We're going back down, wide-legged forward fold. Feet are parallel. Hands to either blocks or the ground. Inhaling, let's, um, we're gonna bow forward here. So, you, you know, keeping the legs, the knees straight, make sure and use blocks if your hamstrings are really tight so that you can keep the knees pretty straight here. You're, you're still reaching inner knee to heel and also letting the inner thigh, the top of the inner thigh, the inner groin come back into the body. Walk the hands back out. Shift them to your hips and come back up to standing. Step the feet back together. Mountain pose. And then release the arms, great. All right, let's take, I wanna take warrior one. So from, uh, if you go to the top of your mat, wherever the top of your mat is, and you're gonna step your right leg straight back. So right leg back, the back, the, it goes straight back so that your feet are still hip distance wide so that your pelvis is pointing straight ahead. The back foot has a slight turnout, but not a huge turnout. All right. And we're gonna take the arms down, inhale, reach them up. 
Exhale, as you bring the, the left shin forward, you're releasing the inner thigh of that forward leg. On the back leg, tone that upper inner thigh. And then step forward. Pause for a moment. So, so before we do the second side, let me remind you, I feel like you can't see my head, but I don't know. But when you step back on the front leg, I said, release the front inner thigh. So you let that whole front inner thigh, so you feel that whole, the pelvis move away from the front inner thigh on the, on the forward leg. And on the back leg, you're toning the inner thigh to the inseam. Now, sometimes then what happens is what's going on with the lumbar spine? Because sometimes people go, oh, but what about the lumbar spine? So on the lumbar spine, on the back leg side, the psoas is pretty broad. So Nancy, I'm thinking of you. And on, on the front leg side, the psoas as it rises is gonna be a little narrower, a little thinner, and it's, so there's tone even as um, in both of them, but they're doing different things on those two sides. So you're gonna test the waters of that. And if you kind of go, what is she talking about? Don't worry. <laughs> She's like, oh, that one. All right, so second side. So you're gonna step left leg back. Both legs are straight. Back foot has a slight turn. I always end up, it's interesting, I always feel like I need to walk my front foot forward a little more, even after I step back. It doesn't, eh. because once I come down and my, um, bend my front knee, I'm like, oh, I have more length. I need a little more length, so. Inhale, lift your arms. And exhale, here you go, warrior one. Releasing the front inner thigh, toning the back inner thigh. So, so on the forward leg, Nancy, on, the, on that side, can you let the psoas support you so you don't feel pinching back there as you lift your heart? And then we'll inhale, take the arms out, and step forward. Relax both arms. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, you're coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. So hands can be on blocks or on the ground. Releasing your head completely. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step to downward facing dog. So strongly reaching again into your hands. The rib cage moves away. The, the upper inner groin is going into the body. Let's take one more deep inhale. And then as you exhale, can you walk your hands towards your feet? Shift them up to your hips and come up to standing. Hands back to the Feeling the weight back in the heels. And then releasing both arms. All right. So I'd like to take um, Warrior Three. And sometimes Warrior Three uh, can often feel, you know, Sometimes people really enjoy using the wall for, I like to use it more for the hands. 
I could also use the back of my chair and, or, you know, so that I can have that. And I'm going to use that because that way I don't have my back turned toward you. Let me see how I can set this up. So either I could either be like close to a wall spot or I have my chair and in a moment, I'll show you how we're going to go here. So you don't have to go quite yet. But in a moment, you're going to take just the left toes back on the ground and the standing leg again is going to be toned to the end seam, greater toe canter coming in. If I'm going to use a wall or a counter, I'm going to pick up the back leg and I would have my hands at the wall. If I'm going to use a chair, I can have my hands at the back of the chair. The back leg is toned. And I can see, I feel like I could have my chair a little farther away. So I'm going to, okay? But I, yeah, so I'm gonna scoot my chair a little bit. All righty. So we'll stand on the right leg first. So just take your, um, your left toes back, but you're, stand, you're standing really over the right leg. And before you ever pick up the back leg, draw that outer hip, that outer greater trochanter in. Tone the inseam of the standing leg because this is where your stability comes from. Inhale, let's take the arms out. And exhale, start to pick up the back leg and bring your arms forward. They might find the wall. They might find the back of a chair. Even if you decide, maybe you want to, if you've got the arms on the wall or maybe you have them on a chair, don't lose the tone. You might reach the left arm forward. And let's come back up. You know what, the chair, I think the wall works a little better than the chair, honestly, because I feel like my chair makes me um, let go of some of the tone I've got. Ready for the second side? Shifting the leg, the weight. Toning to the inseam, all the way up through the front of the psoas as well, the whole deep front line. When you're ready, pick up the back leg, arms go wide, they might go forward. You might have them on the wall or on your chair. Standing, the lifted leg is also toned. And then we'll come up. Mm. Very invigorating. Inhale, let's lift both arms. And exhale, can we bow forward here? Forward all the way to the floor or blocks or a chair. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, hands back in front of the heart. All right, let's take uh, one sun salutation. So I'm going to move my chair out of the way. So you might grab your blocks. All right, and um, know where a blanket is for the one that we'll do after this sun salutation. Then when you're ready, come to the top of the mat. Bring your hands in front of your heart. And with your next inhale, lift your arms. Lift your arms and lift from the heart to the hands. 
Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, downward facing dog. You can always do it with hands on blocks or hands on the ground. Inhale, lift your right leg. Exhale, right foot forward. Inhale, upright lunge. Exhale, plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, the knees can touch and the chest comes down. Inhale, cobra. Tone the inner thighs with cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog or puppy. With your next inhale, lift your left leg. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, upright. Inhale, the arms out. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, step forward. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. And exhale, fold. Inhale, upright. Exhale, hands. Anjali Mudra. And then releasing the arms. All right, so we're gonna to come to the ground and I want to do, um, this one where I'm going to take my blocks kind of like um, at an angle, put them on the ground because my forearms are going to go on the blocks and I'll have a, a, a clasp of my hands between them. I'm going to take another blanket that's going to go under the pelvis. And some of us, like Nancy, Nancy L, you, it'd be good to have two blankets. Just so you don't, if you're still here, Nancy, don't um, take too much in your lumbar spine. Some of us will want two. Some of us will want one. I don't know. Some of you might want none. <laughs> then what I'm going to do, we've been doing this some in classes, but I'm going to bring my forearms to the blocks. Clasp my hands like shoulder stand. So there's a little space in the palm. I have to angle my blocks a little more. All right. And first step to forearm plank. Pressing into that wide part of the forearms, tone in the belly, inhaling deeply. And as you exhale, you start to bring the heart forward. Lengthen through the spine, lift the spine up. The pelvis finds the blanket. I'm gonna relax the tops of my feet. Little tone at the belly for sure. And then exhale, I'm gonna press back up onto my knees and walk back to child pose. With, I can use my hands, my fists.
So I am prioritizing sit bones towards the heels. the hands back. Great. All right. So now let's take, um, let's take Bhadra Javasana, the twist. So if you'll take a blanket and, and fold it so that you'll be sitting on a, a, a corner. And if we take your legs off to the right, so that the, my um, left foot is gonna be at my inner right knee. And the, the right leg is kind of in um, Varasana. I know the light, because I'm a little washed out today, aren't I? <laughs> okay. So the left sit bone is on the blanket. The right one is kind of floating. And we're gonna take left hand behind you and the right hand across to the outer left knee. So as I do, I'm gonna unweight my right sit bone even more. I'm gonna let the right sit bone lift. Yeah, right sit bone lifts, my, my heart turns, my gaze turns, and I might look up slightly. And then we'll come back to center. Second side. So right, right sit bone, right outer hip is sitting on the blanket. The left leg can go back towards Varasana or something. You might have something under the ankle if that's bothering you. And so left hand across to the outer right knee, right hand behind, and then start to lift through the heart. You'll feel an opening that's gonna happen at the front of the left hip the left sit bone gets lighter, lighter. We're going to keep the gaze turned to the right, the eyes to the right. and then come back to center. Okay. Can we take Baddha Konasana for a moment? You might need to add another um, blanket on top of that one. Just for a moment, soles of the feet toward each other. You can just hold the um, shins. So in Baddha Konasana, like Baddha Konasana, Jackie, on uh, the outer knees, Broaden at the outer knees and tone a little at the inner knee. Broaden the outer knee, tone the inner knee. And then we'll take the hands under the knees, lift them back to center, straighten both legs, give your legs a little Needs a massage. Okay, then we're gonna come onto your back. So you move your blankets out of the way. 
We're going to take a figure four to start. So if you'll take the, the right heel to the, the little toe side of that foot to the top of the left thigh, and then bring the left knee to center. So the left shin is relaxed. I'm going to shift a little more weight to the left side. The side that's not being stretched right now. I'm going to remember too, can I remember that at the, the top of the left thigh, those quads, I, if I engage them a little, they draw my knee a little closer to my chest. If, if my chin is higher than my forehead, I want to put a blanket under the head. But all that standing work we did, the outer hip can really benefit from some stretching right now. Then we'll bring the left foot to the ground and then the right foot to the ground. Let's switch sides. Little toe side of the left foot, bring the right knee up, relax the lower right leg. Use your breath and the sensation in your body to help you stay here, to stay present. Knowing that the work you're doing right now is really the most important work. And then we'll release this one back to the ground. Can we go back to the first side where you have your left foot on the ground, you cross the right foot over. Let's take the arms wide. And then you're gonna tilt the lower body toward the left. So the right foot might find the floor or it might find a block. I've also got the, if I can bring the right chin as vertical as possible. And then you might enjoy taking the right arm and just, you know, in a comfortable position overhead, palm facing towards the ceiling. And broadening through the right outer hip there, lengthening through the right outer hip. So from that greater trochanter to the crest of the pelvis, can I breathe into the right side? And then we'll slide the right arm or take it back to the right and lift the lower body back up right foot to the floor. We're going to cross the left one over and then take the, the lower body towards the right. It could come, the, the left foot might find the ground, a block, a blanket. Sometimes a soft furry animal happens to be there. 
we won't put too much pressure on that soft sweetness. And you might slide your left arm up. And then uh, from the outer hip on the left to the crest of the pelvis on the left. Then we're going to inhale, come back up. Release that, release the arm, release the lower body. Take a deep breath, there you are. And let's, um, with your next exhale, let's bring the knees up to the chest and take the hands either behind the knees or they can go below the knees. Knees are coming to the chest. Take a deep inhale and with the exhale, can you lift the head and hug in and make yourself into a little ball? Inhale, bring that back in the head, back to the crown. Exhale, hug in. Inhale, head goes down. One more exhale like this, where you lift the chest, maybe lift the head. Then we're gonna take the head back down, hands to the tops of the knees, inhale the legs away, exhale, hug them in. Two more. And then we're gonna bring the feet back to the ground and come into Shavasana. So you could take a blanket if you like to go under your knees. You could might put your legs up on the seat of the chair if you liked that. So allow yourself to take this time to rest. To release into the, the earth. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who's gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention how to fall down into the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? 
Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Begin to deepen your breath. And make a mindful transition over to one side. Use the support of your arms and bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. It could be seated on the ground, in a chair, whatever support as well. We're going to practice the Brahmari, the, the bee breath. So again, this, this breath practice, this technique we're going to do is really, again, feel how it connects when you're practicing it, the heart and the throat, the heart and your throat. And we are overwhelmed with information right now. So we wanna, we wanna practice pratyahara, which is drawing the senses inward. So if you take your hands up, so that the thumbs will be plugging the, the ears with that little flap, I forget what it's called, at the front of the ear. So the inhale, the ears are not plugged. When you exhale, you're gonna plug the ears with your thumbs and you can rest all the other fingers on the skull and you'll be humming like a, like a bee out the mouth. And if you'll take, let's take even three breaths like that. So just putting your hands in position. You're welcome to close your eyes. Inhale deeply. Plug the ears. get to the bottom of your next exhale, you're welcome to rest the hands in your lap.
Bring your hands in front of your heart. It's appreciating the, the freedom that we do have. And supporting that ability to dream and also nurturing being present and, and in nature as we are nature. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see. Um, I'm going to stop the recording.